All right, y'all are in for something special. What you're going to get here in the remaining 16 minutes is uh, Orsinger's way of solving loop problems. All right, this is, you can name it after me when I die. But for now, I'm just gonna call it the, the damn easy way to solve looping problems, okay? We have this list of students, and in this list of students, each student is represented by a dictionary, right? So lists, lists are just lists of things. Dictionaries are like a labeled list. I like to think of a dictionary almost like the nutritional facts on the side of a, like a, a, a package of Oreos or something like that. You have the label, and then you have the data for that label. Calories, however many calories. Protein, however much protein. Vitamin C, however much vitamin C, right? Not a lot of vitamin C in, in Oreos, right? Not a good place to go for your, for your uh, nutrition, right? But what I wanna do with this is solve the loop. We'll do the, the, the clickbait, one weird trick, solving looping problems. Get your email addresses, put you on the on the subscription list, etc. Uh, here's your one word trick: blow off the loop. Blow off the loop. Period. Easy, it might be easier said than done, right? So our question here is: What is the average grade for students with zero pets? And and the way I'm I'm reading this is not get the different grade averages for each student, but sum up all of the grades. So we kind of, let's, let's fill this out in English first. Um, filter out only the students without pets. Sum up all of the, all of the, um, all of the grades they have. And then divide by the number of grades to get the average. So we'll take Richard Feynman's four grades, we'll take Jane Goodall's four grades, we'll take Carl Sagan's grades, right? See, even Bill Nye the science guy got a 65 on something, so don't sweat it, right? Don't sweat it. We'll add those together and get the average. So that, that's, that's the English break. So step one, break the problem down in English. Or, or whatever your, your first language is into your natural language, right? And I tell you, if, if, you're, if your first language is, is not English and you are translating from, pro, from programming to English to your native tongue and then back again, my hat is off to you. That takes, that takes a, lot of, a lot of focus. Um, so, Break down the problem into your, into your natural language, whatever, whatever language you think in. And then imagine what if, what if you had a programmer in your back pocket and all you had to do is tell them in English what to do. You can't just say, what's the average grade for students with, with zero pets? But you've got to break it down just enough. They, could, they can understand your English, right? So let's see here. I want to try and, and blow the problem off to us, blow parts of the problem off. There is a looping element. There is a conditional inside of that loop for zero pets. So. What I'm gonna do, let's, let's find a person with zero pets. Let's just do the hard-coded approach first. So Thomas Bayes, we will do a student and that student bracket one. That is our student, right? So let's solve part of the problem, not the whole damn thing at once, because if you're trying to do the whole damn thing at once, you're gonna freeze. And if you're freezing, it means you're not slowing down. 
And generally what happens with human beings is when we freeze, we want to speed up, <laughs> right? Or get anxious, we want to speed up, right? And that's, that's normal, that's fine, that's related to the survival instinct, but that's not how we solve programmatic problems by like trying to race through it, right? We'll just encounter more problems that way. So let's, let's just figure this out. Um, solve a simpler problem. by pretending by step one, blow off the loop. Focus on a single um, item from that list of things. If your list of things is a dictionary, it's more complicated, that's fine. Just focus on one thing at a time. And then we'll solve part of the problem, part of the original problem just that one single instance. So how do we, how do we, how are we going to do this for this one student? So we need to get, we need to get this, the, how do we get, how do, how would we get the, uh, get at the number of grades here? Uh, let's see, to sum all of the grades. And then we need to determine how many grades we have, then calculate the average. All right. So let's let's do that. I'm going to ask y'all a question, and I'm I'm hoping I'll get an answer. How do I access the the list of numbers from this dictionary called student? How do I get at that? We need to use its key. Need to use the key. The key unlocks the, the value. The key unlocks the door, right? And so that makes sense in English, but how do I do that in code? You would type in the name of the dictionary. So you, you would type in student and then um, you'd open squ square brackets and then whatever key that you want to access, you would type it in there. So we want to get the grades, we'll type in grades. Cool. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. So we do that in isolation and prove we can access the grades. Okay. Well, I can make a variable called total. And what, what can we do with a list of numbers? Check this out. If you may have seen the sum function. Or actually, how to sum a list of numbers in Python. You don't have to remember everything. I, I've said this before, I'll say it again, use your exocortex. Your exocortex, the, we're, we're cooler than the fucking Borg in Star Trek. We have an exo, exocortex. It's indexed and it's nuts. It's crazy. It is crazy. Oh look, here's a list of numbers, sum. S-U-M. So let's do that. We can sum these numbers, right? Sum. Okay, cool. So we can get that. So access the, the students, then we can sum the list of the student grades. Okay, we can do that. Um, we can also get the length of student grades, right? That tells us how many grades we have. Because what if one student doesn't have four grades, they have five. It's still part of the calculation, right? So. This we is can... all still tied to the one student, right? That's why Hell yeah. four grades. Okay. Hell yeah. Yeah. This, um, the way I'm reading this problem is we would want to get a sum of every grade from everybody without a, without a pet and then divide by the total number of grades. Oh, but you're saying just solve it for one student first. Yeah, I'm saying don't do the hard stuff first. Do the easy stuff first. I beg you. I beg of you do the easy stuff first. Uh, I, folks in your life may have, may have told you don't go for the easy answer. They weren't right in Python when they gave you that advice. They were talking about life, I guess. Thinking programmatically, you gotta you gotta be ruthless and go for the easiest possible thing. N see how I got the student grades as a list. 
I could make a variable here if that would help. Then I can sum that list and I can check the length of that list. So what if I made like a, uh, a variable called total of grades or like grade totals? What's a good, what, like how do we name things? Um, here's a good question. When the hell do you need to make a new variable? Anybody have a good crystal clean answer for me? When do you need to make a new variable? Whenever you want to reuse the data that you just got, but yeah. are processing it to get new data. Whenever you want to hold on to a value, and give it a name. I love being able to name values. So what would we call it uh, if we're getting all of the grade totals? We, I'm figuring number of grades and then grade total and then we can get grade average, right? So our grade total will be the sum of that student's grade key, right? So far, so good. Let me, I'm gonna check chat real quick. Let me know if I'm uh, going too fast or too slow here. Actually, screw it. Let me know if I'm going too fast. If I'm going too slow, you can leave the call. We're good. Cool. I would. So we've got our grade total. Let's make a new variable. And I'll expand this. Make a new variable whenever, and I'll put this in caps, whenever you need a noun to hang on to. Whenever you need to hang on to a noun, make a variable. Write that down. Write that down right now. Whenever you need to hang on to a noun for later, write. That's, what, that's when you use a variable. And when you get to make up a brand new variable, the, the code won't tell you when to make a new variable. The problem won't tell you when to make a variable. But I, I, I really want to hang on to grade total and not have to sum things over and over and over, right? Let's make another variable because I need another noun. How, and how do you know, how do you know when the, when the problem solving process needs a new noun, your directions in English will have a noun. You'll, you'll literally have a noun in your directions as you talk about the problem, right? When I talked about the problem at the very beginning, sum up all of the grades, all of the grades. <laughs> all of the grades is a noun, right? Divide by the number of grades, number of grades is your noun. Average is a noun as well. This is, this is gold. This is gold. If you hadn't written that down before, whenever you need a noun, whenever your problem solving process invent, needs a new noun that doesn't exist, use it. Okay. So what's the new noun? We need the number of grades. And I'm making up the number of grades because it's right here. Divide by the number of grades. Okay. Number of grades. And how do we access this programmatically? Well, if student bracket quote grades quote bracket is a list of, of numbers, well, what can we do? We can ask the length of that list. So far, so good. Cool. Average grade is going to be the grade total divided by the number of grades, isn't it? So that checks out. If you don't trust Python, you can pull out a calculator and do it manually. 75, 73, 86, and 100 averages to 83.5. Cool. So, what else is going on? I purposefully chose a student with no pets. And I did that, not, I didn't do that programmatically. I cheated. I used my eyeballs like a human being and read that it's an empty, empty list, right? Um, so we're building up some, some pieces here. What if, what if our, um, what if our singular, singular variable changed? 
I'm going to change the data just ever so slightly. Okay, but what about the um, pets part where the pet number of the number of pets has to be zero? Well, it's time to play, play the game, spot, spot the noun, spot the noun phrase. We're going to go over time. Is that cool with y'all? If you have life stuff you need to do at five, do the life stuff. You were officially released from class in one minute. Uh, if you're sticking around for this, you're sticking around for this and I'll, I'll also share the, the screen share. So what's the noun in this last piece of the, the, the directions? The directions number told us, pets. go ahead. Oh, number of pets. Number of pets. Okay. So number of pets is you're playing spot the noun. Once you spot the noun, once you spot the noun, create the variable for it. Then after that, figure out how to get the value assigned properly from, 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 the, from the other data. So how would I get from this, from this variable called student, singular student, number of pets, that's a cool name, but how do I actually get the number of pets? Student open brackets, um, the quote thing and the uh, pets. Cool. So let's check this out. Let's, let's sanity check ourselves real quick. Number of pets is an empty list. Not quite a number. Let's do a quick search. How to count the number of items in a list in Python. I'm going to take this search here. I'm going to put it in a search engine. Use the exocortex. There's a built-in function called lang. Oh, yeah. I just used that one a minute ago. Again, you don't have to remember everything. You don't have to live with that kind of stress. Don't do that. And what, what we're going to do is we'll do number of pets is uh, length. Actually, let's break this out. Length. Uh, yeah, number of pets is the length of the student pets. Okay, cool. So far, so good. We have the number of pets. Now, we know that this one student variable has a has zero pets, right? Empty pets. But how, how would we, wh when do you need, when do you know when to add an if condition to your code? Under what, under what criteria will you add an if condition to your code? When you need your value to equal something or match it, I guess. Think a little simpler than that. Like you're totally correct, Austin. That is absolutely like the programming answer for that one right? Because you're making some sort of comparison with an if. Is it when you're trying to isolate a specific set of parameters or data or something? Yeah, absolutely. So let's see. Use an if when you want to isolate something. And then uh, Austin said use an if when you need to compare things to values. I'll give you an easier one. If your directions in English have an if, then your Python will have an if. That's if you if there's an if, you will use an if. Like that's that's the way that goes. And yeah, uh, Austin and uh, it was totally correct here when you want to compare things, uh, and Luke is correct as well when you want to isolate something, when you want to focus on something. So the thing that we want to isolate is if the number of pets is zero, we want to do something. Is there an else here? 
like I, there's no else in the problem. It doesn't say compare this to people with pets. It just says with zero pets. So I, if there's no otherwise in your English or, or, or your problem statement, there's no else. You, if there's no otherwise, right? If this, then that, otherwise, something else is if, if else, right? So if your number of pets is zero, then what are we gonna do? Well, we'll do the code we just did. We get the number of grades, right? We get the, the grade total of that student. And I'll put this in comments. So in this case, compare the number of pets. Now, what am I missing here? Oh, the, the number of pets is in a variable above, right? Okay, or in the cell above. So if the number of pets is zero, then sum up all the grades together, figure out how many grades there are, and then we get the average. The nice part is we, we did the work already. And I d divide the total by the number of grades and we get the average. Okay. And here, uh, for the sake of argument, I'm just going to do a little print real quick. I have a syntax error. I did not mean to do this on purpose, but I have an egregious syntax error on line eight. Do y'all see what that is? No double equals. You need two equals. Yeah, yeah I, need, I need two equals or I need some sort of comparison operator. A single equal is not making a comparison, it's making an assignment. Okay, so that works the same. Okay, so let's try this out. Let's, let's do this manually. So now let's run this process for two students from the list. So we're, we're still going to blow off the loop. I know that there's a list here and it's like, oh my God, I got to loop through stuff. Do the loop last. Now, when I look at this, now this is interesting. The number of pets is the length. I'm going to do the, the assignment in here. So number of pets is the length of the list of pets, right? What if I don't want to have to type this over and over and over again? Has there ever been a, in a, a time with, in your Python code you felt like you needed to duplicate something, but you just, you just wanted it to be simplified? Yeah, I'm going to say, so like, so we talked about when, when would you need a new, a variable, when do you need a new function? And th this might be a matter of style. I'd say identify or play, spot the verb. They spot the verb with your problem. I'm not kidding folks, try to break this stuff down into like kindergarten stuff. You're playing spot the difference. You're playing read things twice, right? You're playing double check your spelling and it can be humbling. It can be very humbling. Like, man, did I have a uh, did I have a crisis when I had this syntax error? No, I just had to s slow down, and it it it's tough. It's tough sometimes to slow down. So it's easier said than done, right? Especially if like the clock is ticking on a test. I I understand that. Um, cool. When I look at the code that we just did, do you all spot a, a verb or a verb phrase here? or multiple yep. verbs or multiple verb phrases here. Infinitum length. Go ahead. Oh, if, if some in the length of, well, the functions that are in there, I guess. Well, uh, let, let me make it a little simpler. How about lines 12 through 19? What would the verb be for all of those different, so like the nouns are the variables, the verbs are like sum and length and the divide, right? 
Is there one verb or one phrase? Grade or grades? Uh, grade or grades? If you were if you were telling um, somebody how to do this in, in English, what would you tell them to, to do? Just in English, not not code. To get the average. Is get like the, the average. Divide. Yeah. Get the average. You played spot the verb. You so spot the verb or play spot the verb phrase. Def get the average. <laughs> That's what you name it, right? That's what you you play spot the verb phrase. Now there's verbs in here already. Sum is a verb. Length, get the length is a verb. Divide is a verb too, right? Uh, and when we take sum up a bunch of numbers, divide by the length, that's getting the average, right? Getting the average. And I'll just say student here, right? And now we can do the following. I'm going to copy and paste my code. Here's the cool part. We already did the work. Create a function with that verb phrase name. Okay. And now that I have the average grade, I can do the following. I can return the average grade. So I take in a single student dictionary. This is, a, this is assuming I'm getting a dictionary, right? Uh, so we might even, um, we might even make some asserts here. Just, just to be super strict, let's say assert the type of student is dictionary. We can also assert that the type of student grades is a list. We can assert that the type of the student pets. Oh, this isn't taking in pets. Okay, cool. Notice if I'm not, I'm not, uh, I, I don't have to worry about that because this is all kind of in isolation, right? Uh, that that's a list. That's good enough. That's good enough for now. And we return the grade. So now, what if we can simplify our code here? Student is Thomas Bayes here. I've named the function. So now I can say, get the average. And I, there's probably a better name, like get the average grade or something like that. So I'll do get the average grade, get the average grade. I'll run this again. Get the average grade from that student, 83.5. Okay. Questions so far, folks? I've got a little machine that just works on one dictionary. And I can say, if student pets, if the length of student pets is zero, then get the average of that student, right? And we might as well print this so we see what's going on. Are y'all in a place where you want to, we might want to take us another step and try to run this on two different students, not the entire list of everybody, but just two students. Yeah. Cool. Let's do it. So now let's run this process on two students from the list. We're still blowing off the loop. That's how you solve looping problems, folks, is you blow off the loop. Okay. So here's, let's, let's make a variable called student one, and that will be students bracket quote zero. We'll make student two, that'll be students bracket quote one. And then we'll, we'll print out these two things to, to prove that they're separate and different. We have student one, we have student two. Okay. Is it a preference to have student one equal students index zero and students index one versus just using them like that? Is it easier that way or? 
you could, yeah, name it however is easy for you. You are in charge of names. I don't know. I'm saying like instead of like versus just using students index zero, like straight up. Is it better to rename it as a variable? Um, I, I don't. I don't have a better answer. Whatever makes it easier for you to think about the problem. Right. I'm okay. not doing. I just didn't know if like later on down the road, like if you did it that way, at some point in the code, it'll break somewhere. Doing it that way or not? Cool. Mm, no, I'm. I'm just doing a very small thing. Oh, okay. I'm. I'm very small thing. Ruthlessly small. Like. We don't even need these variables. I'm going to be so ruthlessly small. Uh, so I have student zero, and we can get the average grade student zero, can't we? And we can get the average grade of student one. That's pretty nice. We've got this little machine now, and I haven't touched a loop yet. Now for, for the uh, probability, for the statistics purists here, uh, I'm going to average averages. Um, we're, I'm not gonna chase that right now. Right, we'll figure that out. But if we've got this working, right? Check this out for student and students. Actually, let's. I'm. I'm going to blow the loop off even further. Add one more layer to the problem-solving process. I will say define a function, which when I say add one more layer means add another um, le level of verb identification. So instead of getting the, getting the uh, average grade, what about getting the average grade of pet free students? Because that's the original problem, right? So let's add one more layer. Get uh, average grade from no pet student. Takes in a student object. And then it's, we say if, now we, we did the work already, if, you can break this out, if we need more nouns, number of pets is length of the student pets list. If number of pets is zero, then what are we going to do? We'll make, we'll return at this point. What are we going to return? Get the average, Get average. grade from that student object. So check this out. Now I'm going to go back to that student's zero variable and I'm going to send that first student into our new function. Uh, student brackets here, uh, student. There's no S, there we go. Hmm, nothing happened. Oh my God, I'm gonna freak out. Nothing happened. What if, let's put the data type in front of this. Student zero has, has pets. Student zero has pets. So this is good. This is good behavior. This is what we want, right? So now well, it's absolutely the case. We didn't have set up to return anything yet. Bingo, bingo. Because we're, we're not even, we don't even care. They have pets, so we don't care. They're not part of the, that's not part of the problem. Can we run this function on another student? Well, yeah, we could do student bracket two. I don't know if they have any pets. Uh, students with an S, there we go. Okay, looks like they don't have squat. So check this one out. For now, once you've got a solution that works completely, as almost as completely as possible, on a single item from the list, now you can loop. Now you can loop. So now we can say for student 
in students. Let's just print. Let's just start with a print. And our function was get average grade from no pet student. A silly long name, but we know what it means, right? Build up your verbs. The e, the, I, I say build up your verbs, uh, and I'm going to break down and tell you exactly what I mean, because we're building everything together, right? Um, build up your verbs as layers of a pyramid. Our first layer of our, our, our simplest verbs aren't necessarily functions, they're operators in the language. Plus, minus, times, divide, right? Um, and, not, or, in. Our next simplest verbs are built-in functions. Length. Length function, type function. You can check the type of something. Some. Some, bingo. Yeah, some. Some, max, min, whatever. They're built-in functions to the, to the language. Next layer is um, combining operators and built-in functions in user defined functions. He knows functions. There we go. And then lather, rinse, repeat. So your highest level function should be def solve the entire problem on some inputs. Let me make sure I have my formatting. Solve the entire inputs. Um, result, first part of problem on the inputs. Output will be the second part of problem on the result. Then you return your output. And this is an iterative process. This is kind of a fractal. It, each layer is just a little bit more complex. Each layer is less English, more code. If you're coming from the top, if you're coming from top in, from outside in, each layer is more code, less English, the more, the closer you are bottom of the pyramid. Tracking? Solve the entire problem. Solve the entire problem. That function is the eye, the eye at the top of the pyramid, right? S adding the, no, adding the um, grades together with these primitive or, or like the built-in functions, like length and sum, those are towards the bottom of the pyramid. And we're building pyramids, folks. With our problems, we're chipping rocks down into smaller and smaller rocks. Then with our solutions, we're building up pyramids layer, layer by layer. So now, we'll look at this. I've got this for loop that can print stuff. We finally are able to, to do a for loop here. Well, Uh, I'll hand wave that we're averaging two numbers. Now this is kind of tricky. Um, let's do this. Let's do average. Hold that. We're gonna, everything's the same so far. 
right? We're printing the average and we can do if average is none is um, not none equal to none. I'm pretty sure that'll work. We'll print the average. Okay, cool. So we need to count. What do we need to do? Number of no pet students. We'll start that at zero. If the average is other than none, what are we going to do with the number of no pet students? We'll increase that by one. And then we can get grade total. We'll set that to zero. And now we can do, if the average is, is not none, then we can do grade totals plus equals the average. And I realize I'm taking an average of averages, sue me. Uh, and then what are we gonna do here? We'll print out, uh, actually we need the average of all, actually just do this. Grade totals over number of no pet students. And we only want to do this if they don't have pets. There we go. And we'll do a little print. Average grades. And then we'll print the average grades. Oh, it's doing this multiple times in my loop here. Got it. Uh, da 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 da. Average grades. That's zero. Ryan, just to confirm, when we're putting yeah. the equals zero at the top for all of those values, mm -hmm. we're just saying to start it at zero, right? Whenever we're doing the loop. Yeah, actually, I don't even need this number of no pet students outside of the condition. There we go. There we go. There we go. So we'll get the average no matter what. We will. Uh, Oh, damn, that's inside of the loop. Sometimes you gotta break, you gotta break your pyramid up. I'm gonna bust my pyramid up a little bit. It's not perfect. I'm going to bust the pyramid up. So what I'll do here is just do, rather than getting my if inside of a function, I'm gonna break this up. Uh, I will say, for student and students. So grades zero. And then we'll do, we'll do our if here, if student pets, the length of student pets is zero, then what I'll do is take the simpler function, get the average grade of the student, that is the student number of students plus equals one will increment it. I'm probably going to back myself into the same corner I just did and that's okay. Average will make a total. And then what are we going to do with that average? We'll add it to the total. And then we will do um, 
total divided by a number of no pet students. And I'm going to get a divide by um, zero error. So what I'll do here is if I say if Oh, this may this may be a good place to have a continue. Uh, if the average of no pet students, if that is zero, we'll continue. We'll just skip and, and keep going. Average, man, let's see. I don't, I don't like that continue is, um, hey, Ryan, my I actually have to hop off. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you said you're recording this. I am. I am recording my failure as I as I come to the end of the day, and I'm tired too. Yeah. Thanks. Sorry, I have I have to meet. Um, but yeah, do I you think? It. Thank you for uh, taking your time for this. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, I'm I'm taking a swing at this one. I've got to take a step back here. It's probably because I'm I'm trying to take this average of averages. I'm going to take a different approach. Instead of getting the average, let's try it. If we hit a roadblock, so this is totally normal. Uh, we disassemble part of our pyramid and rebuild. So I'm going to do that. I'll just take a, a different approach. We have all the right kind of pieces, but not in all the right place. And that's, that's totally fine. Uh, so let's do, let's do the following number of students. We'll set that to zero. Then we'll do grade sum of all grades. We'll set that to zero. And let's, let's build this out a little bit differently. For student in students, I'm going to bring the loop back and I'm going to do things just a little bit differently. Um, I will say a number of no pet students. Well, we know if the length of the st uh, students here is zero, this is going to let us let us into our inner piece of the problem. What we want to do here is take our sum of all grades, because now we know that we can access the student grades. Now student grades is student bracket grades in here, right? Sum of this student's grades is sum of student grades. And then what else are we going to do? We'll increment number of no pet students by one. As we know we're incrementing that number. We are getting the number, the, the student grades. We are summing that up and What are we going to do with the sum of all grades? The sum of all grades, because we want to increment this for everybody will be plus equals the sum of this specific student's grades. So let's try this out. Uh, sum of all grades for students with no pets. Make a nice little string format there. And then we'll do sum of all grades. Cool. 657. Does that track? 657. Uh, does that track for, well, we know 
657, we know that there's two individuals with no pets, right? So let's just manually check this out real quick. Rosalind Franklin has those grades. Let's just manually check. It's totally cool to manually, manually check things. And then Thomas Bayes had no pets. So we'll, we'll sanity check ourselves. We don't have the luxury of sanity checking ourselves uh, if we have lots and lots of things, right? But what I can do here is sum that list of two numbers, 657. Hey, not bad. Okay, cool. So if we can take, I'm going to copy our code here, paste it, print, and we can answer this question programmatically, algorithmically, print number of students with no pets. That will be the variable called number of no pet students. End of line with uh, scanning string literal. I just need to close the quotes, no big deal. Cool, awesome. And now we can get the average grade of all students with no pets. And that will be at the end of this loop here, we can, once the loop is completed, we can say average grade of no pet students. And that, that's the average is always the sum of a, number, of a collection of observations divided by the number of those observations. And it's okay to have nice long variable names as long as they explain what the heck's going on. This is really and truly why I like nice variable names instead of um, uh, instead of X and Y and Z. Okay, cool. It looks like I broke math, right? Looks like I broke math. My problem here is that I'll, I'll jump in and identify this. I'm dividing the number of grades by the number of students, not by the number of grades. Yeah, the, some, some of all grades. So we need to change this just a little bit. Number of grades with, from no pet students. And then we'll change this ever so slightly. The number of grades from no pet students. This will increase by the length of the student grades list. I can, I can simplify this a little bit. The number of grades from the no pet students will be the length of the student grades. There we go. And I've got to change my variables here. Number of students da, 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 divided by the number of grades from no pet students no pet students. And there we have it. 82 point and some change. 82 and one eighth, it looks like. So I will admit I ran into a problem, right? My problem was I was, I built up my my functions just, I didn't do this on purpose. Like my shoelaces get tied together too sometimes. Right? It's part of the process, part of being human and trying to solve these, these problems, right? Um, the biggest problem that I had what I was, was that I was taking an average of, an, of multiple averages. And while the, there's actually a, a problem with doing that on the statistics side of things, it's, I, I thought I could skip it, but I was having a problem trying to figure out how am I going to account for the zeros. So sometimes you got to go back and, and in this second approach, I started building from the loop forward, right? I did start building from the loop forward, um, but I was only able to do that because I'd already, all of these different pieces, I'd already developed a familiarity with those pieces of information by building up uh, smaller things. So. It's not the end of the world if you get stuck. Sometimes you gotta go back a little bit. Sometimes you gotta go back all the way. Um, so there, for, that's, go ahead. Oh, just thank you for doing, you know. Yeah, that was helpful. Yeah, so let's check the original problem. 
what is the average grade for students with zero pets? Well, if I don't have all the prints here, I could have just, I could put this in a little function that returns that average grade of no pet students. Okay. Uh, what I'll do, I'm, I'm happy to, um, I'm gonna hit, hit the stop